This is Jesse Austin with my co-host Carla Link. We're back with another episode of Community Business Matters. We have a very special guest this week. It's uh, Brooke Falkowski, and uh, she has a very unique uh, enterprise, and we'd like to hear more about it. Brooke, if you'd like to tell us who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, so my name is Brooke Falkowski, and I live in Stevens Point. Um, kind of started out as a hobby, which has turned into a small business of giving henna tattoos. And um, really, it's just combining my love of art in, in a functional way and uh, bringing joy to people, I guess, because it's something unique and uh, I always have a new canvas. <laughs> and, what, and what is the name of your, your business? Oh, a Freehand Creations by Brooke. And I, um, I work out of Stevens Point out of my home um, or I travel locally. What kinds of people wish to have henna tattoos on their bodies? And how long does it last? <laughs> uh, sure, uh, so it's a stain on the skin that lasts about two weeks. Okay. Um, if it's in a spot on your skin where you're like washing your hands a lot, it might not last that long. Um, it just like, depends on exposure. Um, and typically I'm doing things for um, small groups of people, maybe I'll go to their home for a birthday party or um, bachelorette parties or anything where kind of a special occasion where people want to have something unique. Um, I do also like fundraisers and different charity events where I'll work as a vendor. It so, gets your name out and you give out business cards and yes, yep. that type of thing. So how did you get how did you get an interest in, in this uh, sideline? Um, well, I have an art degree from UWSP, and so I kind of have that artistic background. Uh, really, it just started out as a way to just kind of play around with things with my sisters, and they would ask me to purchase it, and then we would just do some designs on each other, and I just took a liking to it that way. Um, so when you decide to make it a, a business proposition as such? I'd say, well, that was all pretty much back in like around 2012 when I would just kind of experiment with it. I took it more seriously and started to, with my limited marketing, um, starting to push things out as far as uh, like a Facebook page and business cards and that kind of thing um, since around 2015. So I've just been slowly trying to grow that a little bit each year and I, I say each season because with us living in Wisconsin it's cold a lot of the months that we're um, living here and so it's a lot more popular in the summertime and uh, more events are outdoors and that kind of thing so I fits in with that. Better time for flesh exposure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so Carla had had an interesting question before we went on air, and and I and I was I was unfamiliar with with the science behind behind henna. Huh. Can you give us a little background on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and I am. We had discussed a little bit. I don't create my own henna right now. Um, I purchase it pre-made into paste from a company called Henna Caravan out of California. And I know a little bit about the mixture um, because I am reading up on it to start doing it myself. Um, I'm probably going to have to reach out to some people and get the, the magic um, formula. The formula to get everything going. Um, but it comes from a powder from a henna plant and it's kind of like an iridescent green and then you add things like sugar and lemon juice and a little bit of water. Um, it kind of has a process where it needs to sit and it really becomes um, very rich as far as the stain that it's going to provide on the skin. Um, so it is applied to the skin. Uh, you, you try to leave it on as long as you can and while it's sitting on your skin and getting contact with it, it's creating a stain. And the stain the first day is going to be rather light. It's really almost the color of the sweater. It's kind of like a mustard yellow. And as 
day two and day three come along, I usually tell uh, customers that when they wake up in the morning, they're going to know that it's it, they're going to see the change and that it's gotten darker. And it eventually transitions into a darker mahogany color. And, and they don't have to worry about that. No, I'm that's <laughs> <laughs> so really the hardest part for people is to not pick at it before it just kind of naturally crumbles off. Um, sometimes people think that the henna design is just what I'm putting on their skin and they don't realize that beyond that it's going to stay for a few days and get darker and um, really it's going to stay there for up to two weeks. Do they call you and say help? Um, <laughs> and um, I didn't realize I was getting a tattoo. <laughs> I don't know because it's 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 not painful in any way there's nothing that's really going to harm you at all so I think there's no uh, needles right right it's just the way I like to describe it is it's like I'm putting puffy paint on your skin because it's going to be raised and then after it crumbles off then it has just that lasting stain that's in the pigment of the skin okay. so if they wash their hands and have to get because you do a lot of hands mm -hmm. and you get water on them that's not going to take away the, the tattoo itself um no and what i tell people is once it's on your skin and if you want it to last a really long time you just want to avoid scrubbing it in any way and, oh, and you don't use any like lotions that have mineral oil oh, okay. because that is well, in general, that's not good for if you're trying to maintain a tan or anything like that. Mineral oil isn't very good for your skin in that way. So the same with henna. It won't make it last as long if you apply lotion with mineral oil. Okay. All right. Well, it's very, I've seen some of their pictures and it's the designs remind me of a culture that we don't necessarily have here, like from India. Mm -hmm and very complicated, very different designs. Do you do your own or do you have patterns? Like you, you know, you have knitting patterns, you have crochet patterns, do you mm -hmm. have a booklet of patterns? Um, I, well, I have inspiration that people bring to me. Um, maybe it's a picture they saw online or um, I mean, really anything that you could get normally tattooed on your body, like I've done, uh, an aunt wanted her niece's signature in henna, so she actually brought me a piece of paper that had the the niece's handwriting on it. That's so when you forge that you just look like this. And always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I make up my own designs. I have, I, I call it artist choice, but people will just come to me and say, you know, oh, just do your thing. And that's really my favorite way of doing it because I, I have a good basis of the different layers that create good designs and I can just kind of combine them. Um, in no way am I using a stencil, I'm just okay. doing it freehand. Even if I'm working from a photo, I am just doing it freehand, there's no way that I'm putting that on the skin. Um, I see you have some on your arm here. Oh, these are real tattoos though. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, and we can talk about your wife's feet. That's right. Thank you. I'm glad <laughs> yeah, you brought yeah. that up. I was going to forget about that. Um, okay, let me ask you. Do you, have you ever done any ones that we would know, um, either arms or hands or feet? Um, I mean, I'm sure there's been some local people, and I know uh, Jesse's wife, Maria, works with me. And when I was new to the department that we work at, um, I, we get to do kind of like a get to know me board outside of our cubicle. And one of the things that I wanted people to know about me is that this is kind of like a side gig where I do henna. And she was pestering me for a good <laughs> amount of time. And finally we had one of our outside of work outings um, at a restaurant and I was like, I'm gonna bring my stuff, Maria, we'll do it. And uh, I ended up doing two matching designs on the tops of her feet. Yes. Yeah. And evidently, she didn't tell Jesse about it. Not, not at all. She had been talking about this for quite some time that, that she was interested in doing something like this. Then she comes home. It, they, they, it was, uh, I have to say, I, I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> how well it came out. But, I, but until, until just recently, I was unaware that you were the one who was the creator. Of <laughs> and that kind of leads me into something about uh, people always 
ask me, you know, it would be something that I, if it's a tattoo that I'd like to actually get, I could try it out with henna first. And they'll come to me and say, no, this is an idea that I have for a real tattoo, but I want to make sure that this is the placement of where I want it and if I really love it. And so they can do kind of like a trial period with a, a two week tattoo and then kind of make that decision and see if it's it's the right placement. You or, should market it to some of the community theaters around town and you know, in case that a character would need to have a tattoo, mm -hmm. instead of having the tattoo, they could actually have you do a henna design on it. Yeah. See, marketing. <laughs> Always finding a niche. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what? What I, I had mentioned when when I introduced you that that this is a a, a unique enterprise. Are there are there other individuals like you in in this area? Um. And I hadn't ever really found out about any more local uh, women that do henna tattoos. And I say women because I, I haven't actually met any men um, that do this kind of as a, a hobby or a business. Uh, I was added into a Facebook group called the Minnesconsin Meetup. And it's a combination of people from Minnesota and Wisconsin. And it's kind of a network of support for henna artists. So if you have a big event coming up and you are out of henna and you need something that's fresh mixed, because um, uh, side note, henna is like a perishable food item. Mm -hmm. So you have to have it when it's fresh. Uh, if it's not frozen right away, it's going to spoil and then it won't stain. So a lot of times if something comes up last minute, somebody needs an extra artist for a bridal event or something, they could reach out to each other over this group and I was connected with them through Henna Caravan in California where I uh, communicate back and forth with purchasing henna for my fundraisers and that kind of thing. Um, so I found out that there's kind of this Wisconsin, Minnesota thing with as far as connecting artists. Mm -hmm. And then through that, I was actually um, connected with more local people. Uh, I know at least two other women in the central Wisconsin area that do it. I had worked with one at a, a Tattoos for Triumph event at uh, the Holiday Inn in Stevens Point. And then um, one other woman had reached out to me. Um, I think she lives in Arnett or Amherst Junction. Um, and she was just reaching out to me because she did need some henna that was fresh. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to help her out, but it was nice to make that connection. Yeah, the network, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So what kind of cultures do you rely on for your basic designs? If it's not something that I'm creating, um, typically it's gonna be designs from the Indian culture. Uh, that's where henna originated, so that's where a lot India, of the... From India. From India, yes. Uh, that's where a lot of the um, cultural symbols in it come from. Um, uh, are you familiar with what a mandala is? No. Okay, so it's a elaborate design that starts from a center and then works its way out, uh, very similar to a flower. Mm -hmm. And in the Indian culture, every layer of the mandala can represent something different. And it's kind of a peaceful, calming thing to create a mandala because you're drawing and doodling as you work your way out. Um, and this is something that I've been studying and I will continue to study because I find all of the symbols to be so interesting. But each layer represents, um, just for example, like prosperity, fertility. Mm -hmm. As you work your way out, everything um, represents something that you're working towards. And with henna, um, I'm sure there's so many more things that I could build my knowledge base on, but you start out with a general design or something that grows out more elaborately. Mm -hmm. um, and there is m less traditional henna where it's just like taking requests from people like the way that I do it um, or creating my own designs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I put as much thought into that as uh, some of the traditional Indian henna designs. Other than India, are there any other Mideastern cultures that d do this type of thing? Um, not that I'm aware of or that I've read about. Uh, 
I guess I, I do want to give a little bit of the background of henna too, because okay. uh, it wasn't always used ornamentally. Um, it, it is very functional too. Uh, so originally, before it was more intricately used for weddings and um, fertility and that kind of thing, actually shepherds that were out in the fields watching the sheep would completely cover their arms and legs with it because it has a cooling agent so it's almost like a natural air conditioning and it also uh, acts as a sunblock so that's kind of how it first came to be and why it was ever used mm -hmm. and then as it kind of became more popular in the Indian culture they started using it very ornamentally and you'll see pictures of just entire arms and legs and bodies just covered up because that's a wedding tradition. I noticed that, that in addition to the traditional areas of the body such as the arms, hands and, and uh, ankles and things of that nature, I also noticed that you uh, pregnant women mm -hmm. really like mm -hmm. to have this done as well. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good luck charm. It really, um, I, I like to say that uh, one of the pregnant women that I had on her belly this summer, she had her baby right on her due date, so I'll like to take credit for that. <laughs> uh, but it's really more of a, it is a good luck thing. Also, people like to take photographs because it's just a, a decoration. Um, I know one of, I've total, I've done five mm -hmm. um, pregnant bellies, and that kind of just, uh, if people reach out to me, that's something that I'll do, but um, whether they want to, have it as part of their maternity photo shoot or one lady wanted to be able to have it for her baby shower um, it's just kind of been known as a good luck uh, with pregnancy and good luck with birth okay. do you usually have younger people have this done or is there no age there isn't really an age uh, you know demographic uh, it tends to be more popular with like teenagers and uh, I mean obviously everybody in my family doesn't mind if I want to doodle on them because <laughs> it's something they know that I love to do. Um, I Watch do... television, just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my grandmother has, she's very supportive of me, but she's uh, arranging for me to come to her assisted living and it's going to be more of like a uh, I demo what I do mm -hmm. and then they can get a henna design if they like it. I know she's already been kind of uh, Showing some of my pictures to people there and they're interested in it So I'm just waiting to hear back what date this summer. Is I can that do that. Stevens point? Yeah, in Stevens point. That would be neat <laughs> I think that would be a tremendous thing and what a great idea to have instead of doing bingo yeah. <laughs> You can have a henna design at showers or anything and it seems like a great idea. So how can someone is interested in having this done, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, I do have an email address uh, and that's included on my business card. Otherwise, mostly uh, people are reaching out to me through my Facebook page. Okay. So they'll message me on there. Um, that works best for me. Okay. And that is? Uh, Freehand Creations by Brooke and uh, yeah, really any questions or anything, I direct people there because then they're also getting to look at my images that I've posted, so. And that's another reason, uh, because you do work in a regular job yes. 40 hours a week. Yes. So you can get those messages when you go on your right email or uh, whatever <laughs> your website would direct them to. Yeah. And you would respond as soon as you can. Right, yep. So this is a good example of, of, uh, of entrepreneurship, uh, of multitasking, I guess you would call it, because she does have a day job. Yeah, I've, I'm just thinking of several movies that I have seen where they have, actresses have had like on the back, like different designs, mm -hmm. just, just above the waist. And yet it's probably not really a tattoo, or maybe a stencil, maybe you, you know, rub it on. But, mm -hmm. uh, or um, Abby on the NCIS show um, where she had the one spider web on. I'm sure that she didn't have a tattoo put on. Yeah, it must have been some kind of cosmetic, something for the character. 
every week. <laughs> well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about what you do or what makes you unique or why you feel people should especially want to avail themselves of your service? Um, it's something unique and whether it be maybe like something that unique you want to do for like a Mother's Day gift. Um, maybe instead of the typical thing you're getting your mom every year, maybe you want to make an appointment with me and we can do like a, a bonding Mother's Day gift. I like doing unique things like that. I had a coworker who did exactly that. She surprised her mom and brought her over to my house and uh, we did a henna tattoo and she just loved it. And I just think that's such a neat idea because I mean, moms are so used to getting flowers and everything else and that could be a unique thing. Um, how much does something like um, your hand, one hand cost? So I, I do always say that it's subject to size and detail because if I'm going to spend a lot of time on it, I'll, I want to be compensated for that. Uh, I start hand designs at $15. Okay. If it's going to be something more elaborate. So you're going or, up. <laughs> Yeah, if it's starting to like go a up. sweater tattoo. <laughs> it would be just kind of... It's, it's mostly at my discretion how much work I put into it, what the original source picture looks like. If it's something way out of my scope, I even have to say, you know, I can do something similar to that, but it's not going to be quite as detailed um, because I am always learning and I didn't grow up in a culture where this was the norm. I'm, I'm teaching myself. Um, so kind of depends on that. Are you planning to go to India? <laughs> I don't know if I would actually be going to like overseas, but I have a henna convention that I want to go to, really? and it's it's thrown by the people that I buy my henna from, henna caravan, henna caravan, and it's called HennaCon, <laughs> and it's it's like my dream. Uh, you stay in California. Yep, in California, it's a they do kind of like a hotel takeover, and you stay there. You learn from experts uh, you have workshops Wonderful. you stay right there at the hotel um, they even have a henna slumber party the first night you're there everyone just comes in their pajamas you watch movies and everyone does henna on each other <laughs> i just think that's that's my dream i'll do it someday okay. <laughs> i was just going to um, ask again about the plant itself um, you were talking about trying to make the, your own paste mm -hmm. with the formula is there a formula that you can get from this henna? Um, they do have a recipe that I could use. I think the first thing that I would want to do is re reach out to those Minnesconsin uh, women because I know a lot of them have the cultural background and with there being a lot of women from Milwaukee and um, the Twin Cities, they're more knowledgeable about what works because they're doing a lot of these bridal mm -hmm. designs or they're working with other artists and they've probably already perfected that recipe so i would hope to gain from their wisdom of it um otherwise it's probably just going to be trial and error for a while but that's my next step okay <laughs> well Brooke, thank you so much for taking time to come and visit us and share with us your artistry and you really educated us as well. <laughs> thank you so for thank having you, me. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you so much. So again, this is Brooke Felkowski of Freehand Creations by Brooke. You can find her on the internet. She has her Facebook page there. Any questions or uh, that you would have about uh, a henna tattoo? No, nah, that's it's not called a tattoo, is it? It is, yeah. It is yep, henna okay. tattoo. Okay. Any, any questions or or that you might have about henna tattoos? She's, she's your source in, the, in Central Wisconsin. We're going to call you the source for Central Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and we also, and we also uh, welcome any other entrepreneurs in the area to, to come on the show and talk about their businesses as well. And so, Carla, would you have any last-minute comments to make? No, I think it's a, a very interesting idea and very unique for Central Wisconsin. I think that there I can envision many other cultures that you might want to investigate, such as the Native Americans, and I think we talked about that mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. in their culture. But uh, Chinese, they might be very interested in something like this also. Mm -hmm. okay.
All right, then. So that'll wrap up this edition of Community Business Matters. We hope you've uh, been entertained and informed by, by our guest, by our guest, Brooke Fokowski. And we look forward to seeing you next month. <laughs>